Next up, I'll show you how to test the diode. I'm going to set it. Uh, this symbol on the dial is actually the same symbol as what you'd use, you'd see in a schematic. Now I've got uh, these are 1N4001 diodes, and how you hook up a diode is will be a little identifying line on the part on one end. After that, the side with that line on it is where the black connector goes, and this number here is going to show me the voltage drop of this diode, I believe. If you if you hook them up backwards on this particular meter, it's just going to give you the OL operating level, the same signal as I have with nothing when I'm set on the diode. Now, an interesting trick that I learned today, this is what made me think, oh, I ought to make a multimeter video. I saw this guy, and he was saying that certain meters you can use the diode test switch function and set it up to test the diode and you can actually light up your diode. So let's try it out in theory here. Oh yeah, look at that. So, I mean, you don't really want to test the diode with a 9 volt battery and if you're building pedals you always got plenty of 9 volts laying around, but it's really not good. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be using that. You know, I'm not sure what color the thing is or what have you, whether you blew it up or not. Switch it to diode. And once again, there is a polarity on these diodes. The long leg represents the positive, and there's also a flat side in the plastic where the negative connector is. So uh, you got to hook it up right for it to work, and it's probably not good for the unit to reverse polarity it. So you got your black connector, your negative goes on the flat side, it's actually the shorter of the two wires. The longer wire is the positive, that's actually the anode, and then the cathode is the negative, and that's the shorter wire with the flat side. The second meter, I specifically bought it because it had a transistor checker on it that's going to tell me the HFE. That's what they measure the gain, these transistor devices in. So, um, without getting into a deep discussion about gain and FHE, you'll learn a little bit more about that, but basically it's it's just the amount of gain or volume that this device is going to supply when it's running in the circuit and properly biased. Proper biasing means supplying the correct amount of voltage to the device that the schematic calls for. And in the stomp boxes, a lot of that is, you'll find it's 4.5 volts, which is half of 9. So, real quickly, um, there's two types of transistors that this will check, an NPN or a PNP. So, first what you need to do is Google the transistor number that you have and see what is it. Is it NPN or PNP? Because they're kind of reverse polarity of the same type of part. And also, when you get that data sheet or the information about this part, it's going to show you the pinout. So you could see that, well, this is collector, this is base, and this is emitter, or vice versa. And those are labeled here on the meter. So you need to determine how you're going to plug first what it is and where you need to be plugging it in so the EBC lines up. So it probably isn't good to be plugging them in willy-nilly and backwards. So for the purpose of this test, I've got three of these. The first one read 280, and this meter, like I said, I paid just a couple of bucks for it. I think it was six or seven dollars, and I'm not having the best luck with seeding them. And we got 263 out of that one. It popped up there for a second, and our third one. Uh, 278. So you can see there's a little bit of variation on that. And on some circuits, you know, it does make a big difference. So if you were trying to, you know, nail the H HFEs to the design, if they tell you, well, you want this one to be 80, and you can go through your package of them and find the exact one that you're going to be looking for. The next demonstration, I'm going to use the mil multimeter to measure current draw. So what I've done. I've taken I've taken the probe out of this socket here and moved it over here. There's instructions on how to do that on this meter when you're going to use these settings. 
Everything I do, I, I keep it in the common port or com, whatever that's called, the red one. Except for when I measure current, I have to move it over here. So sounds confusing, but it really isn't too bad. But what I have uh, to demonstrate here, it's a little, it's a, like an LM386 amp board that I took out of a toy and put it in a uh, chassis with an LED and a volume knob. It's just a little garbage amp. And I've got a 6-volt power supply hooked up. Pay no attention to these markings with these alligator clips. The cable is reverse polarity, so you may notice that there's a red clip here, but that's kind of backwards. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and set this to DC milliamp to measure the current. And uh, it's important to remember, this is a different sort of test. You don't want to come in here and connect these <laughs> because when the meter is in this combination, you have to move this over, the meter becomes a hard short. You need to hook this up in the path of one of the lines. In this case, I'm going to go on the ground, and I'm going to hook this up. You saw the LED, the power went off. So the power is going to be passing through the meter. So now we have light, the circuit's running, and it looks like we're drawing 7 milliamps. I can change the setting down here. Yeah, 0 0.007 amp. I'm guessing that's 7 milliamps. So this is like if you're trying to charge a battery and you're not sure if you have enough power, you know, you don't maybe have the proper charger and you're screwing around with that, a good way to do it is to hook, hook one of these meters up here uh, for current and keep boosting that power supply until you see that there's actually power flowing through the battery. Otherwise, it's like having two gas tanks or, that are <laughs> both half full. They're not gonna, they're not gonna balance each other out like an air tank with a tire type of thing. So I, I hope you can wrap your head around that. Basically, you, you know, every meter is different. On mine, I had to move it over and set it on amperage, and you don't come in with the plus and the minus and touch them on both. You have to disconnect the power supply feeding the unit, and then plug in your lines from your meter to have the power on one leg of the power flowing through the meter and then going to the unit. That's how you measure current draw. A little confusing, uh, but it's always better safe than sorry than blowing up your meter, blowing a fuse, or perhaps even the device, because that's what happened to me. I popped something I had been working on and still beat myself up over that one. So, the last setting we're going to be demonstrating is used to determine continuity. Continuity, a big word for the simplest of concepts on the meter. I, I saved the best one for last kids. This symbol here, it looks like a volume or, you know, something like that, minus the speaker. But that's cont. And if it's different on meter, your meter, well, one of the ways you can figure out is when you, that's the only setting that when you touch them together, you'll get the music, which is, uh, that's what this old German guy said to me when I was a kid working with me. When you hear the music, then you're good. <laughs> anyway, continuity, uh, you use it all the time. You know, like I got this old cable here, came out of the dumpster. Is it any good? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, yeah, okay, it's good there. It's good here, maybe. Yeah, and good there, so it's good. Uh, another thing you could do is if you have two people, you think the cable might be cracked, you hold it on here, and then you have somebody bend it. And you can determine where the crack in that cable is, maybe cut it off and repair it with a new connector or something. Uh, another, well, this is a terrible example, so just close your eyes for this one because we're not supposed to be playing with AC. But if you got a wire and you don't know where, you know, what's going on, well, okay, then it's that one. So we'll bend this one over so we know it's not that one. And then later on, we'll get confused and flip flop it and wire it up, and there'll be a fire. Don't play with AC kids. <laughs> but yeah, the continuity, it's pretty self-explanatory. You'll end up using it all the time. Um, here I've got, this is a mess here. I don't know what this was, so I'm trying to figure it out. Well, okay, here's a wire, and here's a little guy. Let's see. Uh, well, yeah. Oh, okay. So pin 7 is coming off of there. And in a more, you know, this is kind of a bad example, but if you had, if you were circuit bending or you were going to mod one of your pedals and you wanted to find a better point to solder the connection on, you know, uh, you know, like you can see right here, well, that's what I want to mod right there, but there's no room to solder. Well, you can go through the rest of the board and when you get the music, 
then you know you could cut it. Maybe that would be a better place to cut in. But continuity, yeah, you'll use it all the time. So quick review, there's the continuity setting. Here's the diode picture. There's the ohm picture. Ohms. The DC voltage, AC, uh, don't play with that. Uh, and then for current, milliamps or the amperage setting, in my case with this meter, I had to move that over here and it creates a shunt where the power passes through it. So if you were to touch this directly on two things, it would be like basically just hard shorting it. When, the, when you put this over here, the meter becomes a wire. So you can't, you know, like this right here, this is a bad idea, you know, you can't do that. That's why there's a fuse in here. On this setting, I believe the fuse is active in the meter when it's on the higher 10 amp setting. The smaller one, I think maybe you'll blow it up. But the smaller, the milliamp is for more smaller, more accurate ratings, the stuff you're going to be doing if you're working with uh, pedals. This is more 10 amps, that's, you know, larger draw stuff, so. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope you learned as much as I did, which is not done because I already knew this stuff. But uh, appreciate all the views and keep on hacking.